All right. Welcome to this episode of VidTau Podcast. This is Ian Naj, co-founder of VidTau. And today we have a very special guest, Mr. Chris Encarnacion. Chris is arguably the best direct response video editor who exists. And you can only make that statement with actual facts. Chris has over $700 million in revenue generated from his videos that he's produced, edited, etc starting back with the first real direct response smash hit on YouTube, Six Pack Shortcuts. And from that, pretty much the who's who of direct response works with Chris. And today he's going to be sharing all of his lessons learned on direct response video editing and how to really drive performance with editing. So really looking forward to the show. Can't wait to share it with you. This podcast is brought to you by VidTau.com. VidTau is our free YouTube ad library and spy tool, research tool. It's V-I-D-T-A-O.com. At VidTau, we have close to a million ads, YouTube ads, unlisted YouTube video ads listed that you can search, find, discover how they're doing on a day-by-day basis so you can really see what ads your competitors are running, see ads in different markets that you can model to create new winning ads for yourself and a whole lot more. It's all there inside vidtau.com. Plus we have a premium edition. So the database is free to access, but then we also have a premium edition where you have full unlimited access to the database. And inside there, we also provide training. So we also run an agency called Inceptly. That's I-N-C-E-P-T-L-Y, Inceptly.com, where we've managed over $150 million on YouTube. It's a video traffic agency, and we've worked with everyone from brands like Descript.com, Huel, to real scrappy direct response, info products, supplements, health, beauty, e-commerce, you name it, we've done it and love sharing what we've learned. Every week we drop new training in there, everything from YouTube ad media buying to running e-commerce creatives on YouTube to hardcore tracking and attribution tutorials to really level up your data science game for advertising and everything in between. Right now, as we speak, we're working on a training regarding YouTube shorts. Um, Hopefully we'll be live by the time you hear this on and on and on. This is our passion is video advertising and we want to share it with you inside of VidTau Premium. And actually right now, for a limited time, you can get access to VidTau Premium for a very special price. So if you go to vidtau.com, sign up for free, check out the database, upgrade to premium for this very special price, you get access to all of the database and all the trainings. And also wanted to add that at Inceptly, we do free brainstorm calls with clients like you. So if you ever want to get help or ask questions about your YouTube ads, your video traffic on other platforms, we're available to chat. Just go to Inceptly.com slash call, C-A-L-L, and set up a time to chat. It's free and we'd we'll love to speak with you. Our team's waiting to speak with you. So without further ado, let's get into the show. All right. Well, welcome everybody. Today we have Mr. Chris Encarnacion on our Vital podcast. And Chris, I mean, so I think what's one of the most interesting things is just kind of your backstory. How you were, uh, you're actually a. Tell, can you tell us how your where your relationship is with the the Latin Grammy Awards? Oh no, no, I didn't win it. I didn't, it was a nomination. I, I, it's the you know how you know when you, you know that little. Uh, there's like that that uh that that game when you're a kid you tell one someone something in the ear and then they tell the next person the next person the next person so somehow it, it got to where like I won this thing or it got to where I'm like world famous and none of that's accurate so I had a stint in me well so the way it started was uh, I grew up in church my father was a preacher and um he was the preacher and the drummer of his church it was a small church oh, you know wow. 60 80 members but when I was three he would put sticks in my hands. And I'd sit on his lap. He played the drums. So I grew up loving music. And then around five or six, I took some piano classes, started playing in church, singing in church. And then when I got around, I think nine, um, someone at church saw me sing. I had like a little special. I sang. And then I guess it was like a, a, a guest that happened to own a studio. 
And then he just approached my dad and said, you know, I would love to record him. See, you know, I guess he was just trying to sell my dad, sell my dad on making me an album so he can, make, you know what I mean? I, now that I'm older, he was in sales. He was trying to convince my dad that we should do an album and charge him a bunch of money. But we just showed up, saw the place. I fell in love. And I just realized this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. I just want to be in the studio. I saw the board. I got back there, hooked up my keyboard, started singing and recorded. And I was, I just fell in love. I, I mean, we didn't leave out of there for almost 12 hours. I was just glued. And then wow. he had a client show up. I saw how he worked with her on their song, found the melody. He created the beat off of the MPC. I mean, this guy just like, I want to be this guy, right? Amazing producer. I, I, I forgot what his name was. I was a kid. I was probably... Honestly, I was younger. I was probably like seven or eight when this happened. So what happened was, here I am now on the quest to record an album. At that young, I knew what I wanted to do. I wanted to be, I wanted to record a Christian album. So I was trying to find places to go. Anyways, and then I found this amazing studio that uh, through friends of friends of friends. And I started going there and they heard me sing. They thought I was great, but I was a really good keyboard player. Play keyboard at church. So they started telling me, hey, we'll help you record your album. You're a kid. We know you can't afford it. So we'll just do your album for free if you don't mind playing keyboards on the tracks that we're working on in the studio. So they happened to be working on a bunch of secular, we called it secular music at the time, but you know, that's what they were. And then my mom hated it, right? My mom even showed up to the to the studio and beat me up in front of everybody, <laughs> just whooped me in front of everybody, like God they didn't call you for this. And literally. I mean, and now she doesn't want to admit it. Now she's older. She's like, that never happened. I'm like, yes, it did. <laughs> but uh, so what? So in the studio, I played a lot of keyboard parts on a lot of songs, helped produce. Um, the talent would come. They would sing. I would help coach them vocally because I was a pretty good vocalist. Um, and I didn't, um, unbeknownst to me, these were guys that already had three, four albums signed with Sony. Wow. Uh, guys that were famous in other countries. Uh, I th I'm just thinking, I'm just a kid that's showing up, eating pizza, you know, playing some chords on these songs, you know, and now, you know, oh, that remember that song you play keyboard on? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's number one on the on the Latin billboard charts. I'm like, what? <laughs> like, hey, number you know, one on the Latin. Wait, hang on. Number yeah, one on the yeah. Latin billboard charts. That's yeah, a big deal. Yeah, yeah. That's a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. Number one uh, R and R charts. And this song, I mean, so I ended up producing a lot of albums during that time mm -hmm. i was literally in there every day just I, I found out how to hustle in there just because it's like oh if this song is going to make it to the album it needs to be at the a and r's email monday morning so we wouldn't sleep wednesday thursday friday saturday sunday just writing composing mixing everything just to get it in there and we, we would make the album it, it was just yeah i i learned how to just grind you know fight mm -hmm. for the dollar you could say but uh yeah so uh a Grammy nomination came out of that back then for producing. And then I got another one 2020 for engineering for wow. uh, mixing, mixing an album. Yeah. And twice then from there, that, nominated. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Twice. Yeah. It didn't, didn't win, but you know, it was, it's nice. You know, and, it, and it's, and it's a big, it's, it wasn't by myself. Right. There's just like a lot of people involved, you know, there's writers and composers. And so I was just a part of that company group where we all got that nomination. It was pretty fun. It was exciting. Yeah. Well, but, uh, well, then fast, fast forward, because um, and, and we'll, we'll get into all the the video stuff soon enough. But I just, yeah, you just it cracks me up, man, because <laughs> how you how you you're so humble about it. How um, I mean, just to be to be nominated is a big deal. And then you were telling me recently uh, when we were hanging out in Austin that basically, so your your wife was, I think she was out to dinner with some friends at yeah, like a like an El Salvadorian restaurant, and uh -huh. then and then so you. you you, you tell me about so you, then you had your own song you're actually you're like the face of this you're the singer yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. so i've always wanted to be an artist and that was always the plan mm -hmm. the goal right yeah uh but you know uh just it just didn't it didn't pan out that way for me um you know uh the music was great i thought my image was great at the time it was just you know later now that i'm older i realized oh you need a big budget for, you know, for traveling and videos and promotions and all this that I never truly had being that young and could never had a couple of a couple of potential investors that want to invest a couple of labels actually want to bring me on as an actual artist. But they just thought I was better suited as a producer. I mean, I, I was told this once it's uh, I was told uh, why 
why would we why would we just turn you into an artist and now we only have one artist when you're kind of a little a small factory we could just send artists your way you could record them make them their songs and make it sound great and now we have 10 artists and the whole time my heart's being broken in front of me but i kind of now understood why that was the most pro- probably the best way to go running a business in the music business you don't want i mean you want to just throw as much at the wall as possible right kind of like mm-hmm. what we do with ads now right right but what happened was so it never worked out, but I still had those connections and I kind of always have those connections. Whenever I'm ready, I can knock on their door and I could just be like, Hey, I got a song. I got the budget. Let's go. And so my wife met me at the transition of me kind of stopping the music going into the video world. So mm-hmm. she never really knew me that would sing in front of thousands of people and would sing at church and would, mm-hmm. you know, um, she never saw that part. So when I would say things like that, she, I don't think she fully understood like at what extent and what level I could actually take it to if I ever decided to. Right. So finally it was kind of like, um, oh, I was thinking about maybe doing music again. And she kind of like made a funny remark, kind of like, well, I mean, well, you didn't make it in the music industry. So it's just, just stop it. Let those dreams go or whatever. And I was like, what? I didn't make it because I decided not to, because, you know, I wanted to commit being a family man. She goes, whatever. I'm like, oh, okay. How about this? How about I, I'm going to release a song and I'm going to have it go number one in a country. And she thought, <laughs> and she thought, seriously, and I, even her friends told me like, Are you, whatever, Chris. And I'm like, I'm serious. I've got the connections to get this thing. I just send an email and this thing's on radio nationwide on the hour. Like if I'm, if I'm like, you know, daddy Yankee or something. Yeah. She didn't believe me. She thought I was full of it. So I'm like, okay, well, that's what I'm going to do. So what I ended up doing was I researched the most famous song in that country, found it, and I did a remix to the same song in a in a very popular genre called bachata, okay. where there's a dance to it. So I kind of used like the marketing psychology to like added it to the music. So, okay, I'm going to find the most famous song, find, you know, bachata, which is famous also, and there's a dance to it. And I'm going to promote it in that country. I'm going to reach out to all the all the radio programmers, send them the song, introduce myself. Dude, we, I did all that, gave it to them. Within two months, the song was number one in the country. That's Being, insane. I was, getting, I was getting invited to like all the big festivals over there to go sing. I mean, like I was number one and then was like Daddy Yankee, We Seen Yandel, like all the big, really big worldwide guys. Yeah. She couldn't believe it. Like she was finally, okay. And then I, I got like 280,000 plays on Spotify on the song, like th- <laughs> 3 million plays on the Facebook video. I got like two, like 180,000 followers on Facebook because of the song. And finally, my wife's like, okay, I get it. I get it. I get it. Like, do you really want to do this or not? Like, no, I was just, just to prove a point. And then she's like, okay, okay, okay go back to your videos. I'm like, all right. So, <laughs> That's yeah. insane. So you basically hacked. I mean, obviously you spent your in- entire youth building up all those connections, but then you basically, you, you you did a hack to get yeah. number one in El Salvador. That's insane. Yeah. No, like no, market and then, research and then, and then boom. Yeah. I mean, I mean, if you, if you want to take, if you want to consider my time, it wasn't profitable, but if you mm-hmm. want to talk about, you know, how much I've spent, how much I made back, I actually made a small profit. Like I actually was spending really small amount on ads and targeting, targeting it. And then I started getting called for shows and I started charging, like I think the most I ever got for a show was like $3,500 to go sing. Nice. I mean, so when I did the whole round, uh, I think I probably spent out of pocket maybe four thousand. Probably made like fifteen or or eighteen back. I think you know within. So I could could have kind of kept going and made it into a thing, but you know, I mean, I'm married. I got kids. I'm not trying to be on the road five weeks at a time. You know, right. I mean, what I do now, I get to be home and I'll take a small break, hang out, you know, hang out with my kids for twenty minutes and come right back and just keep going. I, you know, fits it fits me more. You know, absolutely. Like, yeah. Yeah, that, that's, yeah that's, that's crazy. That's the rundown, dude. That's the whole rundown. That's the, the whole music rundown. I love that. Love that. Yeah, I love that. That's that's amazing. And it, you're telling me too, like she she saw you on TV in a El Salvadorian restaurant. And no, 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 oh, yeah, no sorry. Yeah. So what yeah, happened? Yeah. Was, uh, sorry. So what happened? Her and her. So she's like the VP of a big finance company, structured finance company mm-hmm. downtown. They have, uh, you know, and they went to the Salvadorian restaurant to have like a company dinner. And then um, they were asking her, oh, how's your husband doing and, you know, with his music? And she said, oh, my God, actually, speaking speaking of the devil, like, that's a song playing right now. And they were like, what? Are you serious? Who are you? No way. I'm like, yeah, that's him. Like, that's him. And then 
And then she asked the waiter to bring the phone, which kind of showed like I guess they hooked it up to like a playlist. Yeah. And yeah, there's, there's my picture on, on the. <laughs> Yeah, they couldn't believe it. <laughs> like, oh my god, that's, that's my husband. Yeah, and that's then I got insane. a call. I got a call from her cousin in Dallas, who they were at a restaurant. They heard it. Then I had people in, you know, Connecticut calling. Me. I mean, when you go number one in a country, it starts kind of like spreading out a little bit, you know. And I think I even charted here, Music Choice Tropical Charts. I think I hit like number twenty-two or something. But I didn't really. Yeah, that's where it died. But still, it's cool, right? <laughs> that's insane. So you have you have the playbook for for getting number one in a country. You yeah, can, you can yeah, run yeah. that play. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to Chris if you want to go number one. <laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah, or, you know, if you want, you need help with recording vocals or writing a song. I mean, I'm I'm down. He's got the key. We he's got you covered on keys on on drums on the drum machine yeah. and absolutely did, on vocals did, too. Did you ever did you ever get a chance to see Workout Buddies on on YouTube? No. You got to see that man. When you get a chance, look up Mike Chang's Workout Buddies. Okay. So. So I decided to grab those skills and I told them uh, we were looking for a viral video back at six pack when I, when I was there yep. and they're like, well, well, what can we do? And I'm like, well, why don't we just make like a parody music video? And they're like, what? I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I've got this, I've got this musical background. I could, I could produce a song. I could write the lyrics. Yep. I could have Mike come over. We could drink wine. I could record his vocals, coach yep. him. And then we'll shoot the music video. And we did. And we got like 2 million, <laughs> 2 million views. <laughs> like, day like like within like 24 hours like it was crazy two million um, that's insane yeah wow. or, organic too like i think or i think it was like one million within 24 hours and then the other million kind of like came in creeped up slowly i think it was but like within like three four months it was two mil which is organic um yeah so that was uh another time i got to flex the music muscle a little bit i mean it's not a good song it's 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 but it was it was intended to be a joke, you know. So it's kind of created just to be kind of a little a little a little corny. Don't 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 listen to that and 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 think those are my, are my musical abilities. <laughs> right. Well, that's, yeah. that's that's wild. So did you did you run it as an ad too? At, I don't think we did. I think yeah. we just left it organic. It was just to kind of just feed the yeah. feed the following, you know. Some we would always try to do little funny things like that just to kind of. We knew, we knew, we knew, we knew those kind of videos would always give us a small spike and just like, you know, retention, uh, the audience being engaged and, and all mm-hmm. that cool stuff. I think maybe Dan would sometimes kind of maybe do something like that just to kind of see if anybody would bite and then maybe for retargeting purposes afterwards. Mm-hmm. I'm not really too sure. I think maybe he mentioned he'd probably, but I don't, I don't, we didn't run it as an ad. Like there was nothing really, they clicked on it. I mean, what were we going to sell? You know, how, how to make your own song? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, that's that's so cool, though, because you, you took the same approach like you just described for getting to number one. You you looked at, OK, what's going to be the the type of genre? What's the format that's going to work? And then you're you're plugging in, you know, the star in this case, Mike Chang. And then, boom, it does take off. You do get a bunch of views organically. And yeah. I'm sure there's there's impact from that. That's that's amazing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It was, yeah. yeah no, and, and then. So every time me and Mike would go somewhere, every time we would go out with Mike, he would he would always get stopped like three or four times a day. Like it was just I mean, we could be downtown to eat. I mean, two, three people would come up to him, take a picture. I mean, he became famous. I mean, to us, he was just Mike. And and I I give it up to Mike because Mike was always humble about it. Mike never rubbed it in anyone's face. Mike was just like the way me and you were just hanging out and someone just decides to go, hey, Chris, can I take a picture? Oh, yeah, sure. And we're just back to talking like if nothing. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, like it was just kind of like, oh, yeah, that's fan. Like, like it's just like it was, I don't know. I just think it was really cool. Like he never became like douchey about it. Like, oh yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, which which he so he like he deserved it and he earned it and he knew how to manage it really well. Um, but yeah. what happened was people started seeing me, right? Here is sometimes at the supermarket, like are I've seen you before. I'm like, what? Um, I don't know. Uh, uh yeah, like. And I was like, oh, Mike Chang, workout buddies. And they were like, oh, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> You're the guy who workout buddies with Mike Chang. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's insane, man. And so everyone yeah. knows who's listening. So, so Chris, obviously, you know, huge part of success of Six Pack Shortcuts, which was basically really one of the first brands, companies to really leverage YouTube advertising. And, um, you know, we've had Johnson on, on the show, former CMO and partner and um mike chang the mike and chris's stories mike chang's was sort of the face of that company and um yeah i mean so how did you go from budding 
music star, Latin Grammy nominee to how did you get into to video and how did you wind up working with these these guys building this, you know, what became like a what mid mid nine figure business. Um, how did you end up in that space? That's so it's must have been a crazy journey. Yeah, it was. So I was back in Florida. Um and I was in Florida and my cousin Henry, uh my cousin Henry was also a partner at Mike Chang Fitness. So it was Mike, Dan, Henry were the three main partners. So I was in Florida. This is before six pack and Henry's parents were pastors at a church and I was the worship director there. Um, I led worship every Sunday and, you know, and that's just, you know, I grew up in that church. And so, I mean, he's, you know, um, so during those times, um, Henry got a job here in Austin. Uh, he's a programmer. So he came here in Austin to work, with a comp with uh I don't I didn't really know much about it. He just said, Oh, I'm leaving, I got a job, I'm moving to Austin. I'm like, oh, that's great. So he comes to Austin, I didn't see him for about a year, year and a half. And then uh then he comes back to visit. And I'm like, Henry, and he's like, What's up? How you doing? I'm doing amazing. He goes, and then at that time, real estate had just like I was in real estate, so I was doing music, real estate, real estate kind of fell apart. So I went from closing two, three, four deals a month to nothing, right? Just loan mods, which you know, if Anybody knows that that's a huge fluctuation in income when that happens, something like that, right? Mm -hmm. So I didn't know what to do. Had a little bit of money saved up. Run into Henry again. What have you been up to? Oh, do internet marketing. I'm like, well, what's that? I had no idea what that was. Then he talked to me about some kind of launch and that, oh, well, we just launched something. You know, we did like a million dollars in a month. And I, and I just, I just like, when he said those words, I just kind of like, wait, 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 what? And they goes, yeah, we launched this thing. Um, you know, we did like a million dollars in a month. And I guess he came to Austin work with Eric Livier and started talking to me about how they were launching these products with Eric. And you know, you know, Eric was killing it. That that company was killing it. And and I was just like, I didn't even know that was possible. I didn't even know. I never fa fathomed making that much money in a month, or even making that much money. Period. You know, I was thinking, you know, six figures a month was great. You know, and just slow and low and little by little. So I was just like, dude, what did you guys do? Like, how did that happen? And he was just like, oh, yeah, it's internet marketing. And we did this and we created an offer. And that's when I was like, dude, I want to learn. Like, I've got nothing. Real estate went to, to nothing. I, I'm I'm going to, can I just stay at your house and just watch you work and just try to absorb this? And he was, he was like, sure. I literally slept like head to toe on his bed for like six months trying to, you know, watch him. And I'm like, dude, I just want to learn this. And then he made me watch Armin Morin videos back then. It was like 2007, eight, I think. Then we started watching. Um, I got into Frank Kern. Just started watching Ryan Dye stuff. Just um, the same. Like every, it just started kind of absorbing all these courses. And um, I think uh, Henry uh, was always like in the war room, taking on new programmer gigs and stuff. And finally. I was like, dude, well, I kind of know a little bit and you're still coaching me. Let's, let's come up with an offer. Let's figure something out. And he said, well, dude, if you want to do this, we have to move to Austin. Mm. There's nothing we can't really do much here in Florida because he only came to visit his family and be here for, for a few months. Mm -hmm. So I said, all right, let's do it. Literally October the 5th, I turned 22. By October 7th, we were in our apartment in Austin, Texas. You know, uh, you know, we, we took my little Honda Civic, got a little uh, U-Haul little thing that we hooked on to the to the to the back. And we were in Austin. Crazy story is we actually had a flat in Georgia, which was crazy. But anyways, I mean, it was just it was a mission to get here. But we got to Austin. Get to Austin. Two days later, we go to Eric Levere's house. I mean, uh, Eric Levere's office to say hi to him. Qua Fam is there renting an office space who had a business called Sex God Method with Dan Rose. So we meet and me and Qua connected because we're both salsa dancers. And nice. I'm here. I'm here freaking out. Like, wait a minute. You're dude, you're. You're Vietnamese, you dance also. Like I was, I, I was still didn't realize, like I was a young kid, I didn't know any better. And then he was like, Yeah, I'm a salsero. And I'm thinking, man, wait, you can't use those words. <laughs> like, that, that's, I'm I'm from Puerto Rico. You can't say you're a salsero. Like, ah, oh, like, hey, that's like cream of the crop, you know. We go dance salsa, the lightest guy I've ever seen on his feet, twirling around, killing it, dancing with every everybody, just come here, dance, come here, dance. And I'm just blown away, like. Dude, who is this guy? Yeah. Dan comes down from Boston. They have a company meeting. We meet Dan. We're all friends, just partying, having a good time. 
sleeping, you know, you know, Dan would fly down and sleep on the couch. We'd party downtown. We lived off of Congress right here on, in Austin. We're just good, good. Dude, we're the best of friends. Like it was never business. It was never anything. They had sex God method. They were doing really wealthy. They were doing up to six figures a month, killing it. So now we we see them as like mentor slash someone we want to aspire to be. And then we start launching our own little things, me and Henry. It did okay. I think we launched like probably two or three little offers. Didn't do much. But, you know, like I think for, like the one we launched the first month did probably like 15, 16 or 17,000. And we just got mad that we weren't millionaires yet. But now, <laughs> not realizing that that's so much potential at 22 years old to launch an offer and make 16 grand your first you know, yep. but we were just like, and we were just like, dude, we suck. Like, we have to give up. Like, we we didn't make. We, we're not millionaires. This is horrible. Like, we're like we're not good at this. <laughs> the whole time, not realizing what do you do? now? I just be like, listen, just keep going. <laughs> but what happened was uh, during that time, um, people started coming to Austin. You know, we started meeting other people. Uh, Henry started doing affiliate stuff, uh, making really good money, doing programmer stuff. I'm just still trying to learn, absorb, meet everyone. I've got a little studio in my closet for recording music. So, nice. so that's when people started saying, hey, uh, we're, we're, we want to try out this long form video. We need uh, we need to record our vocals. So then I started getting people in the closet to start recording their vocals for their VSLs. But the VSL at the time, John Benson, you know, created that whole VSL presentation with the white background and the black mm -hmm. screen and the red. So 2008, I think this was seven or eight. That's when I started recording people, you know, 60 page juggernaut scripts, recording their vocals for their, you know, PowerPoint text VSLs. And that's when I started kind of making those for them. I mean, I remember it, I charge, I would charge like 300 bucks to make them a PowerPoint VSL to mm -hmm. record the vocals and to do it it was just, i was i didn't know any better but you know but dude and then their are companies now they're making you know so what happened was this dan sells six pack i mean sorry dan sells sex god method everyone's kind of like in limbo henry gets offered a job to work with vince delmani in new york uh ryan who had a uh, pandora's box who now does other things uh you know other i don't i don't think he's doing that offer anymore but you know he, he's a big time dude too so, so he goes to New York. So we're at Pure Night Club. It's no longer there. We're about to have a round of tequila shots, and literally, um, Mike just looks over and it's like, "Hey, why don't we all just do something?" Hmm. We never thought of that. I don't know. It's just never. We were just partying, hanging out. Mike would look like the Hulk, so we would work out with him like every day for a year. He literally like bars into my kitchen, threw away all our alcohol, threw away all the bad stuff, and said, "We're gonna work out every day." Uh -huh. Like it was crazy. And he, he, I was, I saw I'm here shredded and everyone's looking amazing. And, and dude, we're, we're at the club and he's like, yeah, let's just do something. And then Dan's like, looks over and he goes, are, are you serious? Like, are you for real? I, dude, if you're serious, I'm serious. Are you serious? And then Mike Chang's like, yeah, let's do it. And then I'm just like, I'll do the videos <laughs> <laughs> you know, just from a distance, you know? Uh, and that's it, dude. Just like, I mean, I, they they started shooting and, and cutting their own stuff mm -hmm. for a while. I mean, there wasn't the budget wasn't really there for anything. So mm -hmm. they did a lot of the heavy lifting them, themselves with like they bought a little handheld cell phone. I came in more like a freelancer whenever they needed something, add music mm -hmm. to this or a little bit of that, or for the VSLs, can we record the vocals? Mm -hmm. And I would make those. It didn't, it, it didn't actually. So a lot of the first videos were like my apartment complex, gym, my kitchen in, in the apartment. I know Mike had a spot in Houston. He shot a little bit. And then finally, they got an apartment at the domain. They started kind of going. Uh, and dude, the things just started taking off. I mean, Johnson came in. There was Hunter. There was Nadek. Uh, Henry then found his way as a partner, left New York, came back. And we went from a one bedroom apartment to a three bedroom apartment to the 6,000 uh, square foot office to the big 70,000 square foot office. And that, that was it. That's how everything started flowing. You know, I, I had, I, I remember I had five laptops lined up. I was the only guy, only guy handling video. That's so, all the, so I was feeding the YouTube channel, all the VSLs, all the ads. I had five laptops. I would edit, render. Let it go, go to the next computer. Edit, render, let it go, go to the next computer, go to the next computer. By the time the I was done on the fifth one, fourth or fifth one, the first one would free up and I would jump back on the first one. 
<laughs> we'll work on the next video dude it was just like a like yeah dude and, and thankfully those videos weren't super crazy you know high production it was just kind of my dude mike is so good like like a lot of people don't realize like mike chang has a talent like he i would hit i would roll and he would not mess up like he was amazing like hey guys mike chang so today we're gonna work on it he would just go for 25 30 straight minutes if he would mess up one time and he would just, you know, clap, messed up. Okay, go. And it would be like one small edit, put it together, throw some music, CTA, logo, the front, export, next, 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 you know. Um, yeah. So I'm pr- I'm kind of rambling here, but no, yeah. no, dude. This is this is great. This is great stuff. Um, I mean, so it's it's so cool because you have the the background that you brought to the table before you even touch the videos, right? Is you had all this experience behind the scenes, making music, putting, you know, putting these experiences together for people, um, exciting, entertaining experiences together in the form of music. And then basically you got into sales, you're doing real estate sales, selling people, you're, you're basically doing this, you know, hardcore persuasion and sales really. And then you, and then with your cousin, you're learning all of this direct response, marketing background, et cetera. And then you kind of combine that with the, doing the audio for people on this video sales letters while you're learning all this stuff. And then the opportunity presents itself. And then there you are and you're running, you know, all the video for one of the first direct response brands to really crush it on, on YouTube as a video platform. So, I mean, it's just crazy, crazy how all of those, all those factors and experiences came together for you there. And then. Um, yeah, it was like, yeah. it was like, Look, look, I'm a believer, so I think it was it was just uh, it was a, a higher power plan. Like I, I think God had a plan for me. Like you mm-hmm. know, um, I just think, uh, yeah, man. I think it, you know it was a bit of a miracle because I was kind of lost in my I didn't know where to go. I was a creative and I just loved it. It's, it's like it's so fun for me. Like people growing up would this was a hobby. Like mm-hmm. you know, like I was 12, 13, 14 in the studio recording, making small little videos, like doing things where people were playing a bunch of video games and just wasting time. I was just creating, creating, creating. So it was kind of always depressing having to leave the creative bubble to go work and go make a living. And then when I got the opportunity to make a living off of what I love to do, it felt like I I wasn't working. It was fun. It was fun to wake up and go to that office and see just everyone like, what's up? Oh, we're yeah. killing it. The commercial's killing it, bro. Yeah. Or we would, hey, this ain't working. Let's figure out how to dissect this commercial. What can we do that's better? We're converting at 1.4. We need to be at 1.6 at the time, you know, to be profitable. And then we were just like, start kind of throwing ideas at the table. And then, okay, let's run with that. And then, boom, we're in production. Like, it was just, it was just amazing. Like, it was still one of the funnest times I've ever had in my life. Like, I'm grateful for, all those experiences and, you know, the company, Dan, Bill and, you know, uh, Johnson and everybody. And it was fun, dude. And man, honestly, we didn't know what we had at the time, but now that I look back, we were some talented dudes that worked yeah. because you weren't going to work 40 hours a week there and think you were going to just, you know, swing slide under the radar. Yeah. Like you know, it was, it was about taking ownership and taking and being committed. And, you know, if you're working on a VSL and we need to launch this thing and, 11 days i know you know that sounds impossible but you got to figure that out we got to chop this up into six different pieces and give six editors a piece of it all and kind of just like keep an eye on everyone to make sure it kind of feels the same or is flowing in the same style and then assemble everything i mean we're doing a lot of frankensteins at at, at, towards the end because we just had so much that we needed to do you know yeah Um, yeah but now it's like yeah so anyways i'm just uh dude that's so tell me about that. So I wanted to, cause one of yeah. the, the, one of the coolest things I've heard is how, you know, okay, two things. So basically you would get a dump of content, right? And then basically you, you would get it. And then maybe you have, you know, you're obviously lead, lead editor, video lead, but you'd have other people too in the mix and you would get the same content and you, you would cut it up in different ways. And you, so you basically split test editors. Yeah. So what so, was that yeah. process like? So it it got to the point where, um, you know, we were just figuring out like what else, what what else can we? So I, I, how do I say this? I guess it I, I guess it was a little bit of this. It was a little bit of that. Certain certain spots weren't converting, and I 
And when we would watch them to review them, I had this gut feeling like, man, this should have happened in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Man, like what the decisions that he made to do this instead of that. Like, I just felt like, you know, there was so much potential there. All the elements were there. I just felt like the way the, the editor assembled it wasn't the best. Mm -hmm. um, and I just felt like I probably could have done better. But, you know, I just kind of kept that to myself. And then time would pass, time would pass, time would pass. And then eventually, I think, I mean, Johnson was just kind of, we would always have like breaks where we would talk to each other, or bounce ideas off of each other. And then um, I was, so I would ask him, hey, how did this video do? And he'd be like, no, it didn't work. I'm like, man, I really feel like, dude, I think I could make that work. And he goes, all right, well, just do it, but just do it on your own time and and just give it to us and, and we'll test it. And if it works and boom, it's going to look amazing on you. And I was like, yeah, that's true. So I gave that a go and it worked. And then that sparked Johnson's kind of like, hey, let's do this like you versus you competition, editor versus editor, same script, same everything, same elements. Don't look at what he's doing. He's not going to look at what you're doing. And then we're going to see what, what two videos we get. And we got two separate videos, same, same everything. But, you know, the decisions that he did, that he decided to do for his edits and my edits, they were different. So it was two different videos. We split tested it and the other person lost to control by 20%. And wow. I think I beat control by 40%. Wow. So I, I beat his by 60. And it was just same script, same script, too. That's what's same crazy. Same everything. Yeah. Same script, same yeah. talking head footage. Yeah. Same everything. It's just the stock that I chose and the way I put it together and the music that I chose and the way that I did it just kind of took it to that next level you know um that, that's that's wild and so yeah. that's crazy and i remember you know you talking about this as well how you, you guys would basically one of the tests that you would do before you'd even launch an ad you would you would turn off the sound right and just yeah. watch and see hey yeah, yeah. what's the impact here without the sound i think that's yeah, so, that's so cool so, and, and it's funny because all this stuff all this stuff a lot of this stuff kind of like happened by accident you know mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like um let me give you an example right uh, back when, um, we were just doing the PowerPoint, like, like a uh, white background with black, uh, text and red text that those were RVSLs all the time. It was just that. And then we went over to like the cartoon doodle stuff, mm -hmm. but I was always saying, dude, let's get my channel on camera. Let's throw some bureau, let's throw some stock. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, it was kind of like, well, I, I don't know. This is what works or I don't know. This is what's been, this is what's been proven. So then I think this is exactly what happened. Finally, I just got a little tired of just making these like really, you know, and I just said, you know, so I just created my version of, of a video. And I said, look, here's my version of a video. And I remember Dan split tested that and mine won by 18%. Wow. And I had, I had Mike Chang on camera. I had stock, I had everything. And finally, when that happened, they saw the difference between the PowerPoint doodle stuff and Mike being on camera and with my B-roll stuff. They yeah. said, okay, we're making every VSL like this from now on. So, um, and this was probably in 2010. So I would say 10 or 11, I think it was. I, mean, I don't remember. But I would say like, I'd say we were probably, I don't know if I'm right or wrong, but I'd say we were probably one of the first ones to kind of incorporate the whole cinematic VSLs. Because mm -hmm. I had I didn't see anyone else do that then. It was just PowerPoint. Yeah. Um, and I, once we did that, dude, it was like, I saw everyone coming out with like talking head on camera or just stock or with, with a bunch of, cause it was expensive back then. There was no subscriptions. You couldn't right. get story blocks or any of this stuff that everyone has now. Wow. I mean, dude, we were paying seven, $8,000 a video just for stock. Wow. And they were That's like wild. 70, they were like 70 bucks each. Wow. You know? Wow. And so it was, uh. Yeah, it was the was, hard way. That's oh yeah, dude. All those <laughs> videos were no, all those videos were super expensive to make. Yeah, because you know, but we knew it converted better, so we just we would do it. So there would always be a budget. Hey, uh, how long is the video? Oh, 60 minutes. Okay, five thousand is your budget for the stocks. You know, Got and it. we yeah, and um, how, but how would, um, I, I want to ask you, Chris, on on a point you brought up, which is really interesting, is how you would take. So these long these long form videos like you're talking about where you get 5k for the budget on the on the stock footage and you had five six editors working under you and then you're you know you're basically chunking it out saying hey you got th this this frame you got this frame you got this frame mm -hmm. how did you actually what was your approach to um to training your editors because basically you know you you have this like we we're talking about earlier you got this crazy background where you have all the experience producing audio music and then the video and then you also have the sales the person to person sales experience and then you really went on a deep dive with all the marketing stuff so how did you actually transmit all that knowledge to your team 
because I know, I mean, we'll get into your team now, which is on a whole nother level, but um, yeah, I'm just curious how, how you went about that being sort of the first person and then transmitting that accumulated marketing knowledge to your team underneath you. So, so uh, this is a funny story, but I feel like I have to say this in order for, so you don't understand that. I got sold by a direct response offer. Like when I was younger, I was probably, <laughs> I got sold by two. I was probably 18 years old, 17 or 18. No, I was probably 17 years old. And it was just a PowerPoint video. Mm-hmm. And I think, it, I think it was maybe truth about abs or something, or it was just one of these weight loss ones. Yeah. Uh, I was a very heavy, I was, I was pretty heavy at one point in my life. I, pr- I probably was, I mean, I'm st- kind of a little heavy now, but, <laughs> but, you know, but before I got shredded with Mike Chang, before that, I weighed about 230 pounds mm-hmm. and I'm, I'm, and you've seen my height. I'm not that tall. I'm like five, one. Right. So <laughs> yeah. um, you're taller than five, one. <laughs> I know, I know, I know, but you know, I, I don't, I'll let you say that makes me better. <laughs> no, but, but pretty much, um, dude. So I, I'm just online Googling. I think it was just like how to lose weight. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know anything. I was young, 16, maybe, uh, I, I think maybe I was 15. I don't remember, but so, so I run into this thing, this video, dude. And it was like a PowerPoint video. It was just a voice talking in, in the PowerPoint words. I didn't know what direct response was. I didn't know anything. I just wanted to lose all this weight, you know, and, in you know, and as I'm watching this PowerPoint presentation, I was visualizing in my head, like w- when I would pinch my stomach, when I would wake up and feel, you know, depressed, or I would put on that shirt that I thought would make me look good, look in the mirror. And then, and I'm just disappointed in myself and just being tired of being sick and tired of the way I looked. And, and just, you know, at the time where you're that young, you really care about, you know, you know, the opposite attraction. And, you know, I wasn't really getting a lot of attention because Mm -hmm. I felt like, and it was all, and to me, the reasoning was because I was out of shape. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, So I I was very insecure. And dude, this via cell, man, I think it was truth about abs. I forgot which one it was, but dude, it, my emotions went into a roller coaster. Like I, at, at the end of this video, I felt, I found the answer to all of my problems. Like I actually felt like this is what, this is the reason I will lose weight if I get my hands on this, but I'm broke. Right. I'm 15, 16. I don't have a credit card. So I'm here begging my mom, mom, please, please. I need this. This is going to like, I'm trying to lose weight. And my mom, when she asked how much it was, I think it was like $97 or something like that. She's like, I'm not going to pay for that. We don't have money for that. I'm like, no, you understand. I need to lose weight. And this is going to be the reason. Dude. So when I finally found out later that this is direct response, this is what this is. I which is in my head. I went right back to that moment. And I just like, I literally just, r- just went through like a, like a therapy where I just like relived it and mm-hmm. took all those emotions, put them in a bottle and put yeah. them in my pocket and put them in my pocket. You Makes know, sense. Makes so much sense. Right, I put them right in my pocket. And now what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to create those same emotions in every video that I do for the viewer. Yeah. Like I, I know, I know what triggered me when I, when I saw that and I mm-hmm. know what my mind told me and my spirit told me and my conviction told me. And I realized that I need to force, create this somehow with what I do. And just, if the viewer could feel this, they'll, they would know in their spirit that they need to buy this in yeah. their gut and their conviction. Yeah. And that, and that's really been my goal. Like every video I do that I'm trying to create what I felt. Because mm-hmm. what I felt was real to me when I was watching that, you know, dude, I'm telling you, I wish I could like I would have gone to Vegas and went all in on all my possessions. I mean, I didn't have anything. I was broke. But you know what I mean? Like <laughs> yeah. I would have gave everything like yeah. this is the answer, dude. You know? Yep. Yep. And That's I even went to school. Dude, I saw this video, bro. They had all the answers. I just had to get the ebook. Like, you know what I mean? Um, so so and and I was in sales with with I was in sales with um I was in sales with uh, mortgages, but I also did uh, door-to-door sales with uh, the cell phone company. And I did marketing also for a door company before I actually went full-time into real estate. So I, I had sales background. I had sales training. And then Mike Chang and 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 Mike Chang and Johnson were one of the best salesmen in the country when it came to lifetime fitness. Yeah. So, you know, those guys with their abilities of sales and the way they would, you know, kind of... I got a lot of my cues from them too. But uh, so what happened was this. So when the editor would come, every editor 
that I know that actually got into editing to be an editor. I didn't get into it to do this. I got into it to be uh, a marketer. Like I, mm -hmm. I fell in love with the idea of online marketing and that's why I came to Austin to learn marketing. Like I didn't think I would do videos when I came to Austin. I thought I was, I'm just learning how to do this internet stuff. This is mm -hmm. cool. I got into the video part of six packets because we needed video. And, and the only person there that was talented enough or had an idea how to make videos was me. Mm -hmm. But even then they sent me to Apple to take about a four hour training on how to use final cut because mm -hmm. I just knew how to make music, but I had an idea, but it, you know, they want, I was using windows. So I used Sony Vegas to make, make my videos and they wanted to use Apple. So they wanted final. So I had to like, anyways, but what happened was this, every editor goes to school and they want to just make things pretty. They mm -hmm. want to be Steven Spielberg. They want to be, um, you know, a big director. Um, you know, they want to be the one behind Jurassic Park or the Marvel movies or whatever they want to, or they want to be, you know, the one behind, you know, James Cameron. They want to just, they want to be that guy, right? Mm -hmm. so everything is super pretty. Everything is super just cinema cinematic and, and dude, none of that stuff converts. Mm -hmm. Like no one, that stuff slow pace and it doesn't capture yeah. your attention or your emotion. So when they would come, they would, uh, you know, I would have to kind of like, break them a little bit mm -hmm. just you know i let them do their own video we would test it it would bomb then i would sit right by them yeah and i would sit right by them and i'd be like look your video bombed why did it bomb because it wasn't a good video yeah they didn't understand the concept that they thought the video was a good video because it looked pretty yeah but yeah. i had to tell them no it's a bad video because it made no money yeah like, i had to tell them like no your video is bad because it made no money that's a bad video right. this is a good video but this video looked horrible but it yeah. made money they yeah. couldn't understand that whole concept. So finally, when I when they kind of understood what I was saying, I was like, look, if your videos make no money and you make 10 no money videos and we're paying you, we're in the red. We can't afford to pay you anymore. Does that make sense? Yeah. And then if you, but if you make 10 good videos that make a bunch of money, we could pay you and then we could give you bonuses and raises. Yeah. And they were like, oh, my God, OK. So I would sit by their side. I would mm -hmm. sit right by them and I would tell them frame to frame and I would break things down. Like, what does the script say? The script say. Um, like stop. If you want to know the truth about losing weight, like just stop doing cardio, right? Mm -hmm. So instead of just having a stop sign, mm -hmm. uh, losing weight, and then just stop doing cardio, I would literally have, you know, hey, let's go get the, you know, the prettiest person here mm -hmm. just to be like in front of the camera. Yeah, stop. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, if you're tired of, if you want to lose weight, and now let's grab me smacking my stomach. And then let's then let's switch over really quick to someone running on the treadmill, you know. And so it was just more engaging, piece by piece, frame by frame. And dude, some of them didn't like it. Like I remember they they just kind of hold their face and be upset and just click away. And I'm just like, and then when it would win, yeah, then they would test it. It would win. Yeah, they 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 would respect me. Yeah. yeah. I don't, think, I, don't think, I, I don't think I don't think anybody there truly respected me because I didn't go. To, I was the only one there that I didn't go to school for this stuff, you know. Wow! And you're leading all these people. Who and are I'm like, leading them in post production. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's crazy, right? So it That's was kind of like, yeah, no, but but even this, like that, even that made that sharpened my blade too because yeah. I didn't know that side, the technical side, and the and the politically correct side of doing things in the production world, right? And that sharpened my blade on the on this other side, um, because you know I got a little nervous. You know, they're yeah. hiring people with degrees that come out of the art Institute and, and UT and all this and journalism degrees and all that. But dude, they couldn't beat me in conversions. You know, right. that, that was equilibrium right there. Like, it didn't matter what degree you have. If you're making videos that don't make no money. Yeah. You know, I, you know, I, I I'm, I'm El Jefe, right? Yeah. <laughs> that's <laughs> in, right. In that situation, right. But that's amazing. That's amazing. So that's, that's crazy. Cause basically you had to, you you had to show them that what they were doing wasn't work. So you gave them up that opportunity to see firsthand that oh wow no I, I I need to unlearn what I or forget what I what I thought I was bringing to the table here and you know adopt a beginner's mindset and then just see the results of what it what it looks like when they're working with you know having you walk them through frame by frame how to do it that's super cool I love that so it, it would go frame by frame uh for probably two or three videos and yep. then they kind of had to get the hang they of get it. it yep yeah yeah and sometimes they wouldn't though still and we would still give revisions and all that i mean we would do like three four rounds of revisions with everyone and but and then you know johnson would always have the final revision and sometimes um i, I think our videos became very dialed in when 
Johnson would write this, you know, Johnson, his team would write the scripts and they would mm -hmm. hand it to us. And we would have a meeting and Johnson would kind of give us like all the printed stuff. And he would, he would just go, go through it with us mm -hmm. and act out some, some scenes. Mm -hmm. So we would actually see his vision on what he wanted to do for the ad, mm -hmm. take notes. And then we would go and, and make and get the ad made before then they would just give us scripts and we would just make the stuff. And sometimes the copywriter's vision wouldn't be the video, you know? Right. Right. And then, and then, and then, and they believe in their script. So they would say, Hey, let's, can we redo this? Or so when we were finally dialed in, it was like, that's what well, that was a part of the process. Um, that's and great. then, yeah. And then, and then, and then, so a, a big 60 minute video for one person to do takes anywhere between, you know, four to six weeks. Right. It's just mm -hmm. a big juggernaut of a video with revisions and everything. So, I mean, and and honestly, there's just you know that's that's a that's a, a great healthy pace in reality. Mm -hmm. But um, mm -hmm. sometimes we we weren't we didn't believe in healthy paces sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> right. So so we we needed to launch something quick. Um, mm -hmm. we had to slice the thing up into six different pieces, mm -hmm. and the way it would go is that everyone would do ten minutes. I would mm -hmm. always do the first ten minutes, and then my second best editor would do the next ten minutes, and they would literally go down the best to worst editor doing the back. Um, because you know, we, we believe that once someone made it all the way to the end, they're probably gonna buy at that point. Yeah. If someone watches, if someone watches your video from eight from you know from the beginning and they're and they're in you know minute marker 58 minutes in, they're probably they're probably convinced, you know. For sure. For so sure. We just, yeah. Uh, that's that's super cool. And then what was the so you got the so copy team basically coming up with the idea, handing to, to you guys and in, in and putting the, the production stuff together and then johnson uh, cmo copy leader etc having sort of final say on what actually goes live but then what's the what was the feedback loop looking like because you you know you're talking about how your video be the control by this percent or that percent what was how did you actually get the data on what was working and then kind of move from so, that so i believe we had like a, a custom internal crm kind of thing Mm -hmm. So well, we all had access to it. <clears throat> I mean, well, I mean, Johnson mostly had access to it. And I, I had my own login to check it out sometimes. And Dan gave me uh, access also to see, you know, just to kind of keep track on certain metrics. But we would um, in, in the CRM, we would put something live and you would see um, the name of, of the new creative, the second name and then the control. And you would see everything there like the percentages on if, if it's beating in, in, in um, how many numbers of in sales how many people visited the page we would see everything uh and we had so much traffic at the time that a split test would be done like in a day you know wow. day or two wow um so we were able to just to keep on throwing video creatives at something um and then finally you know you're talking about what 2000 by the time we got super serious and all that like tw 2012 to 19 like all those years of just like split testing something every week mm -hmm. and just, you know, Oh, that didn't work. Let's try this. Oh yeah, let's try that. Let's try that. And sometimes we would split test multiple times at a time, other things. So uh, imagine, so finally we started kind of realizing, Oh, let's, let's, I mean, we need something that really hooks them in the video to draw them in. And then we started really focusing on the beginning of the video, the first five minutes, first eight minutes, the first 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. And that's when we started developing all these blueprints and all these, philosophies on what we should do how we should attack a video because of just the reading the data mm -hmm. like the data really molded us to be who we were and make the decisions that we were making um i remember and and, and we had to learn that the hard way i remember one time we were just excited uh, for a couple of videos where you know um you sometimes you know johnson would come up with ideas he'd bounce we he'd just bounce off of everybody and some people some people would just give him some ideas but we had an idea we thought it was going to be great we thought it was going to be the best thing uh, uh, Johnson was dressed like Bruce Lee. He was beating up ninjas with like nunchucks. Um, you know, you know I'm telling, right? Doesn't that sound cool? Yeah, you know, sounds like an action movie. Yeah, yeah. So he's making like this little like a uh, tea potion is uh -huh. a Chinese secret to get the, the the to get abs. Yeah, you know, and he's throwing he's throwing like you know like cat cat claws in there, and and it's like potion, and then he drinks it, and then he turns into Bruce Lee with a white suit. With the nunchucks and ninjas coming, he's like kicking all the ninjas' butts. Yeah, dude, we're, and we, we so we stopped the whole company, went to, you know from 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 working to watch this thing. Everyone's clapping, everyone's laughing. We think it's gonna kill it. We launch it, 
it tanks. Mm. Does horrible. Yeah. I mean, I would have gone to Vegas and been like, I'm all in. That's going to kill it. Yeah. It's yeah. horrible. My heart was crushed. Yeah. And, and, and I remember Dan, just Dan looking at me and Justin and just saying, we, <laughs> sorry, I just got to laugh. We stopped the whole company. <laughs> we were all cheering. <laughs> Everyone <laughs> was cheering for this loser of a video. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Dude, at the time my heart wanted to you know just it was dropped to the ground but dude now it's hilarious just like how he just you know he goes you know we lost all that money all those resources and we stopped everyone yeah and we were all cheering for a loser that's and crazy he said, and he's like we're never doing this again like yeah. we're never gonna show anything unless it's a winner like yeah. just and that's it dude and from that moment on i just decided you know what let me just put my heart to the side Mm-hmm. And my emotions to the side, and let's just start reading this data because the data is what tells you exactly what you need to do. You know. Yeah, that's that's crazy. That is crazy. So, I mean, is it so? Can you walk us through, for instance, like uh, it's just it's just wild how even after all that you had all that data, right? And then we always think like, okay, no, no, this is going to do it, and then we're so often wrong. You know, it's it's, it's so so funny how that works, and the like the simple kind of boring solution is often the best one but i guess you got to test it right you got to test it and see what yeah. see what happens yeah yeah That's a so, lot of oh, yeah. yeah go ahead you were saying no 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 yeah that please yeah no no yeah you just got to test it all i mean um you know there's a lot of i mean there's this thing that i call you know if you if you see somebody doing something once you you're noticing but if if you look around and you look at three four five six things now you're doing research Mm-hmm. And, you, and you tend to kind of like take, you know, be inspired by seeing this thing and that thing and that thing and this thing. And then you kind of make your own conclusion. Now you have your own idea. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's what I'm calling it here. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah. But so so it, that we we had a lot of those and we also had a lot of original stuff. Mm-hmm. But the original stuff is the stuff that, you know, you got to be careful with, because if like if it hasn't been if, if, if a certain if that hasn't really been tested or thrown into the market, you know what I mean? There's got to be some kind of, it's got to align with a, with a frequency that's already there. Yes. Somewhat there, you know? Absolutely. Um, and I just feel like that's one of the biggest mistakes, you know? Or or just focusing on just the pain point on something and not trying to really connect with the viewer. I've seen a lot of scripts that are like that. And and sometimes they don't people don't understand why it's not working. And it's just because, you know, the, just focusing on the pain point alone isn't enough to 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 have someone you know really connect you have to really connect at a, at, a, at a deeper layer you know it's not just oh you have this pain you want to fix it mm-hmm. like no there's got to be and that's where these stories right like you know i i was you know you know uh, you know i'm a stay at home mom i i you know i take care of my kids i i you know i clean up the house i make sure that there's a hot meal for my husband you know, they're at six o'clock every day, and 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 I I just don't know what I did wrong where where, where he cheated on me. Like that's like layers because now everyone's cooks and <laughs> their husbands work, and so now you're you're just touching a lot a lot more people and drawing them in versus just saying like, you know, oh my husband cheated on me. You know what I mean? Right. You're getting painting that whole picture, getting people. Yeah. yeah they're they're stepping into their shoes. That's yeah. That's so. So tell me, you talked about, so after a certain point, you got all this data, you start to see some patterns, right? You're talking about Mm -hmm. basically you had these blueprints for, for instance, recognizing how important the the first part of the video is, whether it's the first five minutes in the VSL or even the first 30 seconds. So can you just give us, and I know you apply a lot of this stuff in all the work you do now, which we'll get into, but I'm just curious if you can share some, some of what your biggest takeaways are on the first 30 seconds of a video like what's important man honestly so I, I would split that into two i'd say the first five seconds is super important because that's they could skip and you want to do something that's and i don't call that the hook just yet i call that just the skip stopper skip uh, Got yeah it. Just, just you need a skip stopper you need something just to stop them from skipping mm-hmm. uh, and just and, and stay glued a little longer i feel like every frame kind of 
qualifies the viewer to stay for the next frame. Mm -hmm. So if you kind of, if if, during the the skip stopper, if you have that mentality, like let's do this frame one and hopefully they saw frame one and that just helps them just keep their eyeballs here for frame two and let's do this and then three, four, and then just kind of like, and, 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 you know, there's 24 frames in a second. So I'm not saying every frame. I'm just, I'm meaning like every second qualifies for every second. So I would say those five first five seconds, something attention and grabbing. I, I, it could be the camera whipping. It could be stop. It could be, hey, did you? And it could just be a pretty girl, like, uh, a really good looking guy. Just something just to like, hey, like, 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 like just clapping your hand. You grab their attention. Like, hey, you know. And then everything after that to the 30 seconds, I'd say has to be the hook, which mm. is oh, it could be a question like like here. Here are the here are the five like, you know, here are the, are the best. You no, know, here are the top five nutrients for detoxing your body. Like, hey, here are the five top nutrients for detoxing your body. Number one, you mm-hmm. know, Corella, spirulina, you know, mm-hmm. and then talk about. So those 30 seconds, if if you can. That's like the blueprint, you know, mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. it's just, it's just finding something. I mean, dude, I mean, we, we would punch the table like, mm-hmm. Hey, it's time for you to do this and stop that. It's just like, it's just noise, you know, just sporadic. I, th- I feel like everyone's, I feel like everyone's uh, a little bit ADD at this point with our society, our yeah. attention and yeah. social media and everything. And I remember how, remember how I think I, I mentioned it to you um, when you, sometimes when you flash, really quickly a lot of things like yep. every just yep. just flash yep. flash 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 yep. flash when you do when you flash that much sometimes the brain can't really can't keep up yep. and what happens is it just kind of just like relaxes and just mm-hmm. kind of like almost like hypnosis mm-hmm. and just kind of stays viewing what's going on mm-hmm. so uh, that's why i try to use a lot of you know quick clips on the things that i do yeah and with with music and then and then and the music kind of creates um the emotion that's being mm-hmm. given so you got the quick flashes you want thriller edge of your seat throw thriller edge of your seat music now you've got the voiceover also t- subliminally talking to them subconsciously right and just delivering the message right and i feel like if you have those three elements visual audio and then the copy all riding this wave and just directing them emotionally where you want them to take them and where they want to go that those are i mean the best videos every time i see a video that has all those elements i just feel it in my gut like oh this is a winner you know yeah yeah uh usually if they're missing anything or they're missing an element or it could be a little better or it could be tighter if you're feeling it in your gut i don't know it could be better you know, it's, it's it's the video, you know, more than not, it's just the video is just not good enough. You know, I it's so cool how you broke it down too into the, you know, 24 frames per second. You're looking in that level of detail on, hey, what's going on here, especially for the first five seconds. Like like that, you're considering every every little piece of it, which is. Yeah, is there something I could do? Can I bring in a text? Yeah. Can I can I can I have an alarm go off? Like, yeah. ooh, like, so um, can, should I have flashing or. Um, I mean, and another thing, like you were saying, um, another thing that we did, and that's where we started talking about how, what if people, and, and I think, and I think it was, you know, I give credit to Johnson. I think Johnson's the one that, that, that thought of this. Johnson was the one that said, Hey, you know, if someone's sleeping and they got their girlfriend or their wife by them, by their side and they're knocked out, they can't really hear the audio that loud. So the video needs to be really, it needs to be really good with no music and no audio, Mm -hmm. you kind of have to understand what's happening. Mm -hmm. If you have someone just sitting, just sitting there with a, with a talking head, just, you don't know what they're saying. You don't know what's really happening. Mm -hmm. You're reading subs. Okay. But visually, and then boom, you shoot someone just depressed, you know, measuring their fat. Boom. You, you, you switch to somebody standing on a, on a, on a scale to Mm -hmm. measure how, how much they weigh. You already could tell, Oh, they're not happy with their weight. Mm-hmm. They just measured their stomach. They're they've got too much fat. They're mm-hmm. just they just stepped on a scale. They really don't like how heavy they are. Like when you start creating that that kind of connection where you could just tell what's kind of going on mm-hmm. without the music, without the copy, without everything. That's where Johnson. I, I don't know if he was sleeping in his bed and he just thought of this, or, or because because 
I'm going to say this, but he was also saying, hey, you know, it's like when if you're in the bathroom sitting on the toilet and you don't have any sound on because you don't want to be loud, like this video still needs to sell you. I'm like, yeah, oh, that's true. Yeah. If you're laying in bed, it still needs to sell you. It still needs to sell you. Yeah. Three, four in the morning. Yep. So that's where those five seconds, I mean, dude, like no music. What's happening? Mm-hmm. Boom. You know, do I feel it? Do I not feel it? Do I need more text? Do I, you know, I need more effects. I need transitions. Like what, what is it? You know, what are the competitors doing? You know, what's the video that's working? Okay. Well, my five seconds need to be better than their five seconds. Right. You know, more engaging, more connecting, more emotional. Like, I, I don't know. It's just, you gotta sometimes just throw a bunch of things at the wall and see which one sticks and then have 10 variations of that, you know, right. Slice up or re repatched up, you know, that's awesome. Um, yeah, and that that was pretty much it, man. It was just it's kind of crazy because we didn't realize we we were creating a blueprint, you know. Just we were just reading the data and just trying to get those numbers to go to go up and and be be profitable, you know. That's awesome. It's I mean, so you you had all that experience, all that success at Six Pack Shortcuts, learned so much, and then, you know, things happen with that business and then boom, you're you're kind of on your own more or less right and you start doing this for other people other clients and so just real quick i mean if you can mention some of the people who you've worked with and and done amazing things for oh man um like where to so, start <laughs> so 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 six pack was sold yeah and, it was, and the new owners you know they didn't really uh they just really be six pack had an amazing call center a huge call center and I think the new owners really loved the call center and really wanted it for the call center. Mm-hmm. So our department, you know, we, we were let go. Um, I had no idea that I was just head down working, ten, ten, you know, for the 2000, you know, 10, 11, you know, up until they sold 2019. I had no idea. I mean, we had 130 employees, but, you know, I think I, I don't know what to say. I would say maybe anywhere between 350 to maybe six. 100 people kind of came and went mm-hmm. throughout all those years like they would be in this position they wouldn't they'd be you know some positions you know would go through six or seven different people in a year you know it's just, just the name of the beast looking for the a players right so i just i just didn't realize like i'm just head down making videos and i'm running around with the cameras and i'm just i didn't realize people were actually kind of taking notice mm-hmm. so when i got that my phone started ringing like hey man how happened a six pack you're all right i'm like yeah i'm good and they were just like well Hey, I mean, are you looking for work? Are you need anything? I mean, we, 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 you know, I know you're, I know you're awesome at what you do. You know, we, we could use you here for this. And I, and I would just say, oh, yeah, yeah, let's do it. And then the phone rang again, like, hey, you think you have this? And, then, and you know, I mean, and the next thing you know, you know, I was able to, you know, start my business without. I wasn't looking to start a business. It just kind of fell on my lap. Where I'm really good at what I do, and people just started calling me, and they started getting good results, and they're coming back to me, and. Now I'm three, four, five, eight, ten projects in with with the same clients from from 2019, and new clients are coming in now as well. Um, so yeah, um, and uh, yeah, now I've got a small team, and you know we're we're shooting production, hiring actors, location sets. I have a contractor who builds sets for me too, props. Um, you know the whole thing. I mean, it's it's pretty exciting. It's like a small direct response Hollywood. Here, Dude, here in Austin, Texas. <laughs> I know you 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 got you basically have a content house, right? Yeah, there. yeah, it's yeah. insane. Yeah, yeah, yeah kitchen set, yeah. uh, living room set, green screen rooms, uh, storage, storage in, in, in the garage. I mean, yeah, we've got everything, dude. I mean, it's um it's pretty cool. So every day I'm just doing what I love, making videos and you know, and 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 then I get to and then I really just take a break when these big events happen, you know. Yeah, I'm just I'm just grinding away until it's you know, TNC or or yep. Philly Summit West or East or or you know affiliate world or any of these cool things. And um and then IMP. Love IMP. I love David Gonzalez and IMP and those guys over there. Yeah. So I love that's actually I think that's I think David's he doesn't realize how sane he's kept me <laughs> with just having that meetup once a month just to come together and just take a small break and then boom, go right back at it. Um, hey, you're the center of the internet marketing universe there in Austin. So that's dude, ain't it, but it's yeah. crazy how, uh, how it all yeah. worked out. Like I, I didn't yeah. realize, you know, I wanted to be on stage with the leather jacket, the abs, and the sunglasses singing <laughs> the, all the senoritas. <laughs> and I and and here I am, you know, just you know, playing with really cool expensive cameras and 
you know, bringing these scripts to life and just giving it a touch of my creativity and, and what, what I love to do, you know? And yeah, um, yeah no, and, and then, and, you know, and then um, on top of that, you know, internally, you know, we take care of the scripts too. So it's, it's been pretty cool, you know? Full, um, full, like from end to end, full video. End to end. Yeah, full end to end. Performance yeah. video production. That's amazing. And I mean, yeah, you have like the amazing amazing amount of experience and data and behind everything that you do. Um, and you got the team, you know, you got everything there on site. Yeah, and, I still work with Johnson hand in hand. Uh, yep. you know, and and he's he's really cool, man. I mean, he's uh yeah, it's just, his brain is something else, man. I love it. Sometimes if I just want to get inspired, I just call him up, you know. John, yeah, Johnson, uh yeah, Johnson gave an amazing presentation at our at our event in Oxford that you you know would love to have you at. Um, hopefully, you can make the next one. But oh, um, I will. Yeah. hey, send me in my problem there. I'm dude. there. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm there in a heartbeat, dude. No, and the thing with so so, so look, Johnson's a genius, and I don't know if he, he, you know, but he's like literally a real genius. Like this guy. This guy's level of analyzing and, and psychology and philosophy and, and the way of thinking is like next. Is like he's got one of the best brains I've ever met. Like, you know, you know, I've met a lot of really cool people, but he is like one of those special dudes. You know what I mean? Um, and I, I'm just honored that I got to work with him for so many years at Six Pack, and I still get to work with him now. And and dude, it's like, man, he's. I'm telling you, he is something else. He really is. He, he is. He's a great. He's he's amazing. And and so are you, man. And and um, if um if people want to reach out and, and chat with you about doing video, which I mean, I you know, Chris, I know some of the you can't mention some of the names that you work with, um, but people, anyone who's done anything in direct response, will be very very familiar with with some of your your big clients, um, and um, so your week your work speaks for, speaks for itself. Where can they work? How can they get a hold of you? How can they reach out to you? So I'm currently right now, I've been a little bad. I was like, I'm just so busy doing the job that I don't yeah. have time to talk about. Got it. <laughs> you know, the job. No, so, but no, but um, they can email me. Um, uh, Chris at VSL uh, ADZ dot com. So it's Chris VSL. at VSL ads with a Z dot com. Nice. Uh, yeah. So Chris V S S and Sam L S and you know Leonard and ads a Apple Derek Zebra dot com. Yeah. That's uh, amazing. Yeah. Just, just email me. Um. And you know, for now, I'll 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 have the page up here, like in the next. Maybe by the time this goes live, I'll have something there. So if you go to vslads.com, I'll have just a, a quick lander. You could go there, see my bio, picture of me, a couple of logos of the company that I've worked for. And then you could just contact me and schedule a meeting if you want to just chop it up, ask some questions, talk ads, VSLs. I mean, I, I'm an open book, dude. I'm cool. You know, you know, you know me. <laughs> dude, yeah. I mean, you got, you got, there's so many, so many ideas that, that you sparked just, you know, just chatting about not, not only ads, but just, how the whole team fits together in terms of creative and um yeah another yeah. thing is this too right like a lot of times when people write copy they write copy for a tsl or they just write copy because they think this copy is going to work yeah. but you know like if you go to hollywood a lot of those scripts to make videos they're not written like that they're written in in a video format to make a video Got so it. a lot of times you know i sometimes tell clients like hey i know you're writing the script and you want to tell the story but if you could just think in your mind this is going to be a video mm -hmm. maybe you'll write things a little differently or maybe you'll go deeper in certain things or maybe you'll you could even highlight how, even even while they're writing the script highlight leave a comment i would like to see this potentially as a b-roll or leave this or leave that and just you know i i, I don't know what i guess I mean, it's just a common thing that i've noticed here's a script making a video but mm -hmm. you know uh, uh you know it just makes it a little easier to because there's like a small disconnect between script and video. That's totally. a small one, you know, and, and, and it just makes it easier to cross over to that other, other part. If they just a little more communication, I guess you could say. So, so do you usually work from a, some kind of shot list when you're doing the live production stuff or is it, or do you kind of, do you have the freedom to, to set that up typically who makes those calls? So if you have the script, no, I, I, yeah. No, I, I make those calls usually. Like I just go through the script and I'm I'll create the shot list of what I need for oh, wow. certain parts of the video. That's cool. Yeah, but but what I'm saying, I guess what I'm trying to say is this. 
when you write a uh, when you write a script, mm-hmm. you can't really you can't really write in there like the way I'm punching the table, the way I'm mm-hmm. getting things flashy, all that. That's not really in the script. In the script, it's just do you want to learn this and learn that and da 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 da? Right. That's all that's there. So what I'm saying is, I guess what I'm trying to say is this. You know, you've got the script, you've got the hook, but I guess if you could really figure out five different angles or different way, the video could kind of start in a way, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, so I always say this, if you're deploying one version of a video into the world, that's like having one ad account. Right. Mm-hmm. That like you don't want to do that. Everyone knows like you want like 17 of those guys, right? Right. So so I would say when you're writing a script, like don't be afraid to just like you know, just load it up, you know, load up yeah. 10 different lines in the beginning, different hooks, different angles, you know. Yeah. It, it's okay, you know, just just go all out and just figure it out or have a conversation with your your editor. Because maybe there's certain th- there's certain things your editor could probably do visually that you didn't even know about. You right. Know, what, if, right. what if your editor could add, you know, these bomb explosions or transitions or, or or fire transitions and explosion? So when you're cooking, you know, you could, you know, have a hook where I don't know, like, you know, like you're you're, you know, you know, when you're cooking like fish and then you, and then you throw something and a big fireball kind of pops out. Yep. Like they, you know, that's going to call someone's attention, you know? Right. Right. It's just it's, what, I, what I'm, that's what I'm trying to say is this I'm trying to say that. Us video creators, we don't we we do more than just provide what you're writing. Like yeah. I guess maybe a conversation to find out what's our limitations. What, what can we really do? You know, mm-hmm. I remember I remember one of the biggest commercials that we had at Six Pack. We literally like took the fire extinguisher and literally like just sprayed the talent. You know, and that was a huge. You know, he was like blowing out a candle. We just sprayed him and sprayed the, the, the candle, you know? Yeah. And it's like, that wasn't in the script. But we were thinking, like, what do we got to do to to make this thing so they can stick around? Like, just grab the fracture and just blast them, you know? I mean, that <laughs> one of the, my biggest takeaways from our conversations, and then definitely this conversation, has always been that when it comes to making high-performance video, your the post-production team is, it needs to be in partnership with, well, definitely the the copy the copy team it's not like there's so much there's so many decisions that you're making on the post production side um on the production side obviously with making the shots but on the post production side specifically like choosing what sections to put where that it's proofs in the pudding right you you have two different editors the same audio same material to work with and you get two completely different results so yeah. i just think like it's an oversight a lot of times where people people think that Oh, you know, it's it's all about the copy, um, and it is a, a, all about the copy. But if you have copy with poor management of the the post production, it's totally unpredictable what you're going to get. But if you have expert marketers like yourself actually handling all that on the post production side, I mean, that's where the magic can happen. Because there's so many, like like you're saying, there's 24 frames a second, and as an editor, you're choosing what to put in front of people each of those frames. So, um, yeah. I just think, man, it's I'm 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 blown away with the level of knowledge you have, and and um, yeah, definitely your results speak for themselves. So, yeah, no, awesome. um, no, you're, you're right. I mean, look, copy is super important. The most important thing it, it sets the foundation of everything that we do. But if but I feel there has to be a beautiful marriage between video and copy in order for that to go to the next level. Like the weakest chain is just gonna anchor you down. You know. Yeah. Um, and I feel like if if yeah, with more communication between those two fields, and yeah, I mean you you'll, I mean on it, I would say yeah, I mean us. So at six pack at six, at six pack at the time, we, we you know we were doing that. Hey, Chris, here's t- here's the ten new scripts. You know, go 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 go. But once we actually sat down and had that con- that pre conversation, here are the ten scripts, and this is what I envision. And having that envision and asking questions and dude, we started coming out with way better videos. And sometimes during those that meeting, we would start adding on ideas. Oh, oh, what about if we did this and that and that? Oh, I like that. Yeah, yeah. And then that. So we would even sometimes rework some of these scripts in the beginning for the hook to really capture or 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 to make make it even 
juicier, right? Which mm-hmm. it's just an extra opportunity to like, man, make some. I mean, I I don't know. I would if I had to put a percentage on it, I would say our videos became thirty percent better with just that small meeting before we actually started working on anything. Just you know, and I don't know. I, I guess figuring out how to make that come together even more, and what you know, and just you know, start rocking it. I guess <laughs> and testing it all. <laughs> Absolutely. I guess. And my last question really is kind of so you got the connection between copy and and your and the post production team. Um, from the beginning to the end of production. And then how did that, besides you have the, the the dashboard you're talking about where you're seeing how stuff's performing, but did you ever strategize with Dan, the uh, co-founder is running all the media? So mm-hmm. did you, did you, was Dan involved in that process too, in terms of like, like, hey, here's our targeting or here's targeting that's working, not working. How did that all connect so, together on the media buying side? So, so, so Johnson's brain with, would- would come up with a lot of the, the big stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, he would bounce ideas off of me, Kay, Christian. I mean, a lot of the people that were there, Esther, a lot of people that were there, part of his team, mm-hmm. like the higher level people, he would bounce ideas. How, what do you think? What do you, um, and, and also in me being a, a visionary with my head. So when he would tell me something, I could, I could already see in my head what mm-hmm. it needs to look like. Now I just got to go get a camera and go make it happen for everyone else. But in my head, I could already kind of see like, Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? So when he would get these reactions on my face, he would be like, yeah, that's a good one. Cause, cause your face is doing that. You're excited. Uh-huh. So he, he knew that I was gonna, gonna just take the camera and go do exactly that and fill it with that energy. Right. So we would get the scripts. We would then have the meeting with Johnson. He'd break it all down and then boom, you know, making the, the list of the props, shooting days, coordinating with talent, flying people in, into town who need to be flown in, you know, booking hotels, all that stuff. We had Travis Bowles handle the majority of all that, who then later Shannon took care of the majority of all that stuff. And then they would coordinate pretty much, you know, the day to shoot. Mm-hmm. Once the day to shoot would come, I think at our peak, we were about 13 people. Wow. So we, we would have shooters. Uh, um, you know, we had our team, our team was really good, man. I, I honestly, we, we got some people that cared that were really on it, motivated. Um, we would, yeah, we would shoot. So we'd probably spend, let's say four or five days of shooting. Uh, and then once we would shoot, boom, we're in the lab, cutting it up. So let's say in four days, we would have a draft on a, on a commercial. I'd watch it. I'd give revisions back to the editor. I, you know, help him out if he needed something or once we would have it, then Boom, it would go over to Kate. Kate mm-hmm. was Johnson's right hand when it came to the copy side. She would watch, and if she thought it was good, send it over to Johnson. If not, she'd kick it back to me. I then I would help out to knock out those revisions. If Kate thought it was great, then Johnson would see it. And then if Johnson had any revisions, he'd kick it back to Kate. Kate would kick it back to me, and then we would knock it out. Now, if it would pass Kate, Johnson, then it would go over to Dan. Mm-hmm. And then Dan would watch it. If he had a revision, then it'd get kicked back all the way back out. Or if not, then it would get deployed. Every week we had a meeting with Dan. Uh, every Wednesday, I think it was, Wednesday or Thursday. Mm-hmm. So then we would meet with Dan every week. Dan would go through the list of everything that we've accomplished for the week. And and so and we would have two columns, like what we completed, what's coming next. And then he would, then, and then at the end of the meeting, we would then look over his, his uh, AdWords account. And look at all the ads that are deployed, what ideas we might have. We might have to rework certain ads because they're not hitting like they should be hitting. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's and then there we would brainstorm there during that meeting. And we, we he had a TV, his computer was connected to, so we would watch the spot. Mm-hmm. And then we would just kind of, you know, and then we all had our laptops too. So if he felt like this frame, let's do this instead, we would make a note of that, make a note of that, make a note of that. If we could just do it really quickly with stock and, and in post, we would knock it out. Same day, deliver it by end of day so he could deploy it the next day. If we, if there's a pickup we need to do with the talent, we usually had them over like twice a month. If it's someone that was in town, we call them up, they come over immediately and we knock it out. If if not, then we would wait till the next time they were in town, which would probably be, you know, a week and a half later. And then we would knock that out immediately and then knock that out and then deploy it. And then after they deploy it, usually we would always, it would always do better. We would always get it over. And it was rare that we would ever have to do all that. And then it still wasn't working or we need to do something else. Like usually that, that one, Hey, we need, let's rework this. That was like the one that, and if, and if it just didn't work or it's something that, Hey, we put too many resources onto this, mm-hmm. uh, let's just trash it. Cause we have these other ones that are showing potential. 
We would just focus our focus on the ones that's showing potential. Dan had this philosophy, always work on your strongest thing and always always work on making sure your strongest thing is stronger versus uh, wow. versus putting putting any energy on the weakest thing because you know yeah that was always his thing so if, if we would give something one go and if it didn't take up we just let it go and jump onto the next thing that showed that it had more potential because it was stronger so let's right. make that stronger versus you know yeah that that's a great man what a great philosophy too really I and mean, so saves a Focus on the where you already got that momentum versus. Yeah. And John, oh, and you yeah. want another one? Dan, Dan also well, used to say this. Why not? Let's just Dan, Dan Rose quotes. Dan would always, always used to say, don't always try to hit a home run, right? Because the home runs are, are, are the probability of you hitting home run is, is very low. That's, you know, um, uh, so he was saying how, right. So he was saying how always go. Okay. He was saying, "Don't, don't, don't go for the home run because the home run is the probability is really low. It's like chasing a shoot, a shooting star, mm-hmm. right?" He said, "You're better off just just reaching for that low hanging fruit, yeah, and just stuffing your face with that low hanging fruit, and forget about climbing the tree and potentially slipping and breaking your arm. Grab, yeah. grab the top. Screw that. Just grab the one that's right at the bottom or the ones that are falling off the tree. Just take it and mm-hmm. just be happy with that. Don't try to go for the, you know. Anyways." So sometimes awesome. we would catch ourselves like like because at one time we were like, oh, let's run, we got to do what Ty Lopez is doing. Let's run a Lamborghini. Let's uh-huh. do this. Do that. And our production budgets were going through the roof, dude. Yeah. We, we had Lambos. We had Corvettes. <laughs> we, we, our nice. props, our prop set, we were making a casino. Like we had casino tables we were buying and renting. And we had like, dude, we shot a fat. Uh, like a fat suit scene and yeah. le- like well, like with the legit like nerdy professor like makeup artists uh, like where the the whole suit costs f- like almost five grand wow like, with wow. the fat suit with the prosthetic face and the prosthetic yeah. hand and the yeah. back of the neck yeah. like we started going <laughs> crazy and then and then sometimes those videos weren't do, wouldn't do better or those videos were just like and then dad yeah. would say are we are we are we chasing shooting stars with this stuff mm. like like we need to just go back back to the foundation. What's our what was our foundation? What got us here? Yeah. Like it wasn't these crazy elaborate, you know, it, it was just good copy, good hooks, good, you know, uh uh good skip stoppers. Right. And and then that message should should resonate to the to the to the to the avatar, right? Whoever's mm-hmm. watching it. Cause because these spots are are custom and they're tailored to this certain person, mm-hmm. you know. So we're not talking to we're not talking to a hundred million people here. We're talking to one person, and we're just hoping that this one person happens to be the same person twenty thousand times, right? Yeah. That watch the video and take the same action, which is to to buy. So so we're really just you know we really started man. I mean when we were dialed in, that's what we were doing. Like okay, well, these ads are for right wing, church going, married men. This is another one. Let me give you an example. Right, you would think. You would think um, if you're making if you're making if you're making videos for men over sixty, mm-hmm. right? You would think show. I mean, and I'm I'm not trying to sound crazy here, but you would think you show a really beautiful girl, yeah, beautiful woman. You would think potentially her by the pool mm-hmm. or her by the beach. You would think that would really catch a man's attention. All those videos were bombing. We just mm-hmm. didn't get it. I don't yeah. understand. Yeah. So then Johnson was thinking. And you know, that's his brain. He goes, dude, these are right wing Christians. Their wives would flip out if they were watching yeah, someone like that's right. Right. You no, know? because then they're like, babe, what, what are you watching? And they'd be like, Oh, I'm watching a video about my testosterone. And it's a girl like in a you know what I mean, at the pool or something or the beach. Yeah. Not, you know what I mean? It just didn't. So we thought, oh my God, let's put a turtleneck. <laughs> <laughs> let's put a turtleneck on this lady, you know, and just make it look educational. Like she's teaching a lesson. Yeah. Green screen, simple, yeah. maybe a, a chalkboard uh-huh. or, or, you know, with a big stick, just pointing at it. Yeah. Dude, those videos took off. That's amazing. And it was just because dude, if he's watching, if his wife comes by, what are you watching? Cause obviously she's very attractive. She's going to be like, what's that? Mm-hmm. He can easily just be like, Oh, hun, look, dude, Right. I'm just, I'm just learning about my libido and my testosterone yeah. and the yeah. five foods I need to do to, 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 you know, to make sure that I am 
doing my part of the man, you know? <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, it's just going to be like, oh, okay. She's not going to care, you know? That's funny. So like, but you would have thought, like, I would have thought the other one would have worked, and it didn't, you know? For uh, sure, so. for sure. And you guys you have the, that kind of flexibility to be able to think of that and also just execute on it and test it. Bro, speed of implementation, dude. Yeah, speed of That's implementation. Like, that is, dude. We had it dialed in. I mean, if we were, if we, if we were thinking of something on Monday, yeah. it was written by Thursday. We were having our meeting by Friday, and we were we were already shooting the following week. And then we would have those spots turned in the following. So within two weeks, we already had spots done from the the for, from the moment it was it was thought of, you know. Um, um, but that those were certain spots, right? I mean, sometimes you know, big VSLs take a long time to write. Right. Right. You know, yeah. And then that, and another thing too is this: we never deployed just one VSL at a time. Mm. Johnson would write one, Kate would write one, Dan would write one. We would yeah. deploy two, three different whole VSLs, different ideas, and then the one that would stick would be the winner. And then mm. everyone focused. And then at that point, we, it was just intros, intros and hooks. Yeah, just back to back to back to back to back. And then sometimes uh, when commercials would get oversaturated, mm-hmm. we would just take that, rechop it up put that in front of the VSL, add a different hook just to make it feel fresher and newer. Nice. Um, if certain emails would crush it, we'd turn that into a video. Yeah. Uh, and then just uh, as a commercial, if not as an intro, as a hook, sometimes we would even have a really good script. Dude, there were times we had scripts. Dude, don't be afraid to redo the script or, or, or redeploy the video mm. or redo the video with a different face. Really? Like, For the winners? Dude, I, we, yeah, I mean, yeah. Th- there was a script called Truth About Cardio that mm-hmm. we had. Mm-hmm. We ran that spot for like eight straight years. Wow. I, I mean, we did that spot probably like 15 times. Wow. Uh, you know, uh, a young girl, old guy, old girl, uh, blonde hair, brunette, young guy, different location. We just kept running that spot over and over and over again. And and also we we would take that spot and we would try to we turned it into a template. So every time we would launch a new product, yeah, or or deploy a new product, we would actually create the truth about ads test reload version. Wow. Or where, where it would it would it was it was uh designed for that offer Got for it. that campaign. Proven format, proven yeah, right. structure. And then we That's would, awesome. We would create the truth about abs green detox, the truth about abs. For every product, sleep, like every product yeah. had, had a version of that video. And you'd start by testing that as a starting point. Yeah. Wow. Every time we every time we would deploy a new offer, it would it would just be the the winning the, the first batch that we would throw at the wall would be the winning the, the like the the home run home run scripts. We would always just redo the home run scripts and we would throw like an extra, you know, extra five to ten new ones, but it would we would always always deploy with the home run scripts. Got so it. Um, um truth about breakfast, truth about cardio, truth about um uh the oh man, we did the we had the the butter, the uh I don't know if you ever saw that spot, but it, it's um and we even had other people copy us. Like mm-hmm. I knew I know we were the first ones to do that where we had a big we had like a what like 50 pounds of butter on top of, of the table. Mm-hmm. And, and and the guys talking about you know how this is fat, this is what your fat looks like. This is 22 pounds all sitting around your waist. Yep. We, we saw other offer owners kind of copy that <laughs> that whole theme that we had. Um, yeah, man. Um, and we, like, dude, I would say if something would win, let's just say this, mm-hmm. and this is probably some good, 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 good little secret stuff here, secret sauce. If we had, if we had a winning commercial, mm-hmm. that wasn't that that wasn't the only time that I was deployed. Mm. Every winning commercial got a reboot, mm-hmm. either with a female, either with a male, and every winning commercial literally got reworked for other offers. Got it, it was never, it was never like, oh, this is a win. Okay, it's done. All right, we need another one. Like, no, we wouldn't archive it and never use it again, or never rework it. Or yep. and sometimes if if it start if it started fading, we would literally wait like. Psst, four to six months and just turn it on and see what happens again. Yeah. And then, and then there it goes. It's taking yeah. it back off, you know? That's insane. So you're like, yeah, you're, you're learning from your successes too. Like you're, you're rebooting it, get more mileage out of it. And you're also learning, extracting the essence of it, applying it to other stuff. 
so that yeah, you I've, got a head start. I've, like I've even seen like when when six pack when six pack got um you know when the whole when it got acquired and everyone kind of went their separate ways, I started seeing a lot of our themes be deployed from other people. Yeah. Like, like, Oh, this guy just took the themes that we had already and just gave them, you know, gave the, the now people that they're working with some jewels and they tried it and it must be working. Cause now they're running it, you know, that's amazing. Um, yeah. Yeah, su- yeah. Super, super smart. That's yeah. Yeah. And it's just, yeah. So yeah. If something was winning for you, dude, Change the color. I don't know. I know a lot of these affiliates, they sometimes use a lot of pictures and stuff. Yeah. I don't know. Flip it. Invert it. Change the color. Yeah. You know? Uh, yeah. Change. I don't know, man. It's just. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's that's awesome. Chris, yeah. man. Um, well, let's plan on doing a, a round two sometime in the next next few months because I feel like there's so much we could talk, so much more we could talk about around yeah. all this stuff. And Do you have get, any questions? Hey, hey, real quick. Like, hey, here it goes. Before we go, any questions? Any, anything you want me to elaborate on? <laughs> anything that, anything that you think? Anything that you think? The moment we, the moment we hang up. Yeah. Two hours later, you're gonna be like, "Dang, I should have asked them this." I don't yeah. want that to happen. Oh, they're, be gonna, they're, open- they're gonna be a whole list of them. They're gonna be a whole list of them. But um, okay, I want to be but, an open book for anything. Like any question, any story. Yeah. What happened to Mike Chang? I mean, I'm I'm cool with that too. <laughs> that's all. That's, all, that's a, That's an episode. That's an entire episode of itself. You know, it's funny. I think um, one of our. Do you know Peter Kell? Yeah. Yeah. So I think Peter's doing something with Mike Chang. I, I heard or some. I heard some rumor about that that they might be working on something. I don't know. Really? It could be, oh, I could. I, I could be just imagining things. But uh, like, yeah, he's in Bali, that. right? Mike Chang's in Bali. Yeah. 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 yeah that's funny. Yeah. I mean. I got a bunch of questions about, you know, how you, how you think about on the live production side and how you've gone about building all that. Cause I think a lot of, see, talk to a lot of brands um, and a lot of times they'll, they'll work with folks like, like yourself who are just professionals and, and, and you're so good that you kind of have like, you've got a backlog of people waiting to work with you. Right. So a lot of brands are, they will put the, some effort into trying to build out their production capacity internally. Um, mm-hmm. And which is super smart, right? Cause you got, you're ramping up that speed and implementation if you do it correctly. So um, I think, you know, if you ha- have any advice for, for, for companies trying to go at it themselves in terms of trying to, trying to build out that live production capacity, um, I'm just curious about what have, what's been some of the the roadblocks you've encountered in building out your team, and just what advice do you have for for people trying to do that from scratch? Hmm. Wow, that's a good question. So, the biggest issue that I've encountered is passion. Right? I've I've encountered more people that don't have they're not as passionate as you would want them to be. Yeah. Or they're not as passionate as I am. Yep. Um, I really, I'm really in there with the editing and staying up till four in the morning. I yep. just love this stuff. Sometimes my wife's like, babe, come on. <laughs> you yep. know? Um, I just feel that that's a big issue. Like I feel like, you know, look, editing, editing's connecting clips together, mm-hmm. you know. Little transition, little music, whatever. That's not really. I mean, you've got people that are in elementary school that that do a little bit of editing, right? Mm-hmm. I just feel is really the person's passion, mm-hmm. commitment, and 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 just having the desire to make it the best that they can. You yeah. know, because yeah. if 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 a person has that desire, they'll spend an extra two hours on that hook for you and find a certain template or transition or a theme or maybe you know really take their time because some of this stuff takes a long time. If you if you if you wanna if you want like you know seven shots split slicing and splicing and zooming in and out and transitioning and having all this motion to capture someone's attention, that's someone there, you know, rotor rotoring for hours, going frame by frame for hours. And if that person is not passionate, doesn't really care, they're just gonna go on story blocks grab a stock and just throw it on there and move on to the next to the next you know the next line you know yeah and i and 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 potentially you know that person taking that time and making it more captivating is what's going to make it convert better Mm -hmm. and if they're kind of just going the lazy 
way. They're really hurting your your conversions is what they're doing. Um, so I would say if you could find that guy or gal that loves what they're doing, they're passionate, their videos really draw you in and everything, I would say just invest in them. Invest in them. Make sure they're happy. You know, uh, uh, help them get better. If there are any courses they could take, um, give them access to, to plugins. Mm-hmm. A lot of the times, a lot of times, things don't look as good as they should, is because they don't have access to the that, the right plugins to make that go to the next level. Because these plugins could sometimes be three hundred dollars for one. And I mean, yeah. I like. Let me give you an example. Here's another secret. I use Final Cut Pro. I mm. use nothing that Final Cut Pro offers to make mm. my videos. Really, my Final Cut Pro is not. It's not. It's not stock. My Final Cut Pro is on steroids. <laughs> like I probably have no kidding. I probably have over thirty thousand dollars worth of third party plugins and and assets. Unbelievable. For, yeah, like it's not stock. I mean, it's all the stock stuff looks looks tacky and corny. Like if a, 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 a an elementary school kid did something. Yeah. So if you, if you got someone just with just with Premiere. Just with just with final cut, just that's it. That's all you got, and and they're supposed to make something like there's no true assets or elements. I mean, so that's another thing, right? So giving that person, you know, those res those resources, you know, assisting them with anything that they might need, um, and then little by little, you know, if you know, bring on an extra person to give them a hand. Mm-hmm. So you can get you can get faster, and what you do is you know you have that extra person that comes in to maybe do the back end of, of all the videos while she does the or him or he does the front end because mm-hmm. you know once you have someone glued in for thirty minutes the back end you know they could create a style guide you know the colors the fonts everything keep it like this these are the transitions that I'm using and whatever plugins you got them they could hear the plugins that I'm using so you know and and I'm doing something. You know, every 15 seconds, I'm doing something visual, mm-hmm. you know, something visual every 15 seconds, like has to be something like transition or, or a trans, a transition, a split screen, mm-hmm. okay, uh, something. Right. Um, yep. And then music every two minutes needs to change. I mean, there's that goes on for four and a half, six and a half minutes. And it just sounds so monotonous. Um, and then and then after you do the price reveal, you can kind of just keep looping that last song. That's fine. It's not a big, you know, because it's like the grand, the grand, you know, finale. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, and then the end card, you know, 30 to 45 seconds, just keep that end card up there with some music. Um, and yeah. And then um, so then once you have that second editor kind of doing probably three, four projects like that, where they're doing the back end or they're doing just the subtitles or they're doing just like the FAQ part, maybe just the FAQ part or or no, they could they're not qualified to do the VSL. Maybe they, they only do the upsell, mm-hmm. you know. Someone needs to already be, be purchased and converted in order to see their video, or maybe, or maybe, uh, maybe they just do n- none of the VSLs. You have the main person do all the VSLs, and they work on maybe your content stuff for YouTube, mm-hmm. or they work on your, um, you know, the, if you have a course, so they have to buy first to get access to the course. Those are the videos that that person works on, mm-hmm. um, and then eventually, you know, after three, four you know, projects, I would say let's two and a half months, then they can start dipping their toes into the VSL. I mean, that's what we did at six pack. If you started at six pack today, you're not working on a VSL. Like if you started at six pack today, I mean, you know, like when we were at our peak, you're, mm-hmm. you're in production. You're, you're, mm-hmm. you're moving lights. You're, you're setting up the green screen. You're making sure you're, you're going to the store. You're picking up props. Mm-hmm. You're, you're getting everyone coffee. You're, making sure the talent's good and he has water. Like, that's what you're doing for a while. And if you're cutting anything, you're either adding subtitles to something or you're cutting um, YouTube videos for Insane Home Fat Loss channel, not even the Six Pack Truckers channel. You, you're, you're, you know, and then once those videos started looking pretty good mm-hmm. and then, you know, um, and then eventually you went from assistant on set or help or the grip on set to eventually becoming a camera person. And mm-hmm. now you're now you're running B cam while, you know, um, on on some of these shoots, and then eventually you could run maybe A cam, and then eventually you could probably start directing some of these, because now that you kind of understand the whole flow, and then now now you you become just like the project manager for this batch of ten commercials, mm-hmm. you know now now you're the one coordinating with the talent, you're the one just assembling everything and getting them in there, and then from there on the editing side, 
Now you're, you know, now, now you're doing upsells. You're doing the back end of VSLs. Now you're probably taking a stab at some commercials. Um, it, it's, it, it's, it literally, it, it was literally like, a, like a, a thing where it took time. It wasn't never, because our thing was this. And J- this is, again, Johnson, Johnson's philosophy, right? So Johnson said, look, we are a football team at the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to have Tom Brady throw the ball to the fourth string wide receiver. Yeah, like we're trying to score a touchdown. Yeah, I want the best. I want Tom Brady to throw it to Randy Moss mm-hmm. every time he can. You know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and 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 I want. And if he can't throw it to Randy Moss, he's throwing it to Jerry Rice. He's throwing it to somebody. You know, right, like, right. Like we we want the absolute best. Everyone that touches this ball has to be the top here in the building like we do not want so you know in order for you know and 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 dude and that's how it was so like all all, so it it came to the point where all almost all the vsls like i i handled i mean every yeah pretty much i mean or if i did get any help with anything it was like the they they covered the back end or they covered like an upsell or something but the main beginning of this you know it's just like we we wanted we needed to win. I mean, think about it. If this VSL bombs, you know, we're negative. You know, we have. I think our payroll was like six hundred grand. You know, <sighs> you know what I mean. It's like if Panic this, <laughs> if this, bro, if yeah. this bombs, yeah, you know. And then I know, I know our, I know our AdWords. Uh, 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 I know. Thing, the thing Dan mentioned to me was I think we're spending like com- almost nine hundred thousand a month on ads, like on just the spend and then the payroll and then. Dude, you, you know, probably the- spending like hundred k a day. Those, yeah, those, it was, it yeah. Was, no, it was it was crazy. Yeah, that's wild. The thing is this: I mean, our affiliate program wasn't that big. I mean, mm-hmm. yeah, you know, some people ran. We we, we opened it a little bit here and there, but I mean, we Dan believed in just internal traffic, cold traffic generating. Mm-hmm. You know, he didn't really. You know, so and and you know, and I think maybe there was a lost opportunity there. I think if we would have probably focused a little on that side too, we probably could have because I see some of these what some of these affiliates are doing now, and it's, it's scary, dude. It's, it's, you know, so yeah, but, um, that's insane. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy too because you talk about the process of going from being a new person and then you're starting at the bottom and working your way up. It's like they're absorbing the whole culture. That yeah, but, that but you also built. a lot. So a lot of these guys want to make things look pretty. Yeah, and you want to be Spielberg, so you gotta like just let them right. know we're not doing that here. This is not where you know we're we're trying right. to make things convert and stick and win. So I would say once you got that person, you get you bring in the second, and then you know, um, and then you can either go multiple ways. You can have the main leader with three, four editors. You can have an assembly line where yep. maybe that main editor does the first ten minutes for you, and then everyone else kind of goes across, and then that last person just knocks out the subs for you. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, there's a lot of ways to go about it. Um, if you want to jump in right away, right away, I would say, and I'm not trying to toot my horn, but I would say like work with someone like me. Hell or yeah. hundred yeah, percent. Yep. That could, that could get you there immediately. All right. And then if you do have someone on your team, you know, I don't, I mean, I've, I've done it before where, where, you know, I've, I've kind of project managed an editor on the other side of the fence. And mm-hmm. they assisted me and that kind of walked, you know, hey, I'll handle this. This is what you can do. And I even gave them revisions on frame.io. So and then once, you know, they got up, up into shape, then boom, now they're handling handling the rest of the videos. And I'm and I'm always an open book, dude. I'm really cool. I mean, you know what I mean? You know me, dude. It's like just yeah, hey, you, can, you can text me at, at midnight. I don't care. I'll answer. If I'm available, I'm not on set, I'm not yeah. sleeping, yeah. or I'm not down editing. Sometimes, you know, you gotta give me 48 hours because either our, I mean, we, I just finished like a six day shoot yeah. and you know, my slacks like just slammed. I'm just going through everybody. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, was, I was out. I was out. I was out. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, the thing, the thing that comes across too, Chris, is what you mentioned is a level of passion, right? The level mm-hmm. of passion that you put there, you're putting into to your work here. I mean, you can't like, you can't manufacture that. You kind of either have it or you don't. And it's pretty clear with everything that you built that, um, that it's, that's the key component and that's what makes you special. That's like the foundation of everything for you, for what you built there. Yeah. And, and I'm, um, I'm, just, I'm just grateful, bro. Like I'm just yeah. living in gratitude. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? I like, I like my mom was a single mom with five kids and just the fact that I get to wake up every day and make video, it still, it still feels like it's, it's, this is, this can't be real. Like yeah. it, it, it really feels like, 
like God really knew. I mean, look, how do I say this? It doesn't feel like this. I know this is what it is, but what I'm saying is God knows me internally and out, right? He understands mm-hmm. everything about me. Mm-hmm. And he already knew where I would fit perfectly in, in the world. Yeah. And he already knew where I would where where he would place me. I'd be the happiest, the most fulfilled, yeah. the most, you know. And even though when I was younger, I didn't see that. I, I didn't see the vision. I didn't care for it. I wanted something else. Now that I'm older, I realized, dude, I don't, I don't want. I don't want to be famous. <laughs> you know what I mean? I still want to hang out with my kids at the beach. You know, that's yeah. what music probably I got buddies of mine that 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 came from the same camp that are famous right now. Like yeah. legit. Like I've got guys that dude, the, the, they'll the, they'll sing in front of 20,000 people with Insane. their name head, headlining at a concert in Latin America. Yeah. And where we went to high school together or they even used to record at 12 years old in in my closet. Just you know, <laughs> now they're famous, bro. They've got that's 300 crazy. million spins on their their music videos and and we we we, we text we talk and yeah. they tell me they tell me dude dude you did it the right way bro like yeah. they, they regret it they can't go anywhere it's yeah. crazy yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, so, man, Chris, i mean it comes across you do you're in the you're in the right right place for you that's what it is and um you're doing yeah. amazing amazing stuff and, and so you got so it's uh chris at vsl ads a D Z the Z. Yeah. Right? With the Z. Yeah. yeah. VSL ads with the Z.com. Perfect. Well, um, man, it's been a, it's been a, it's been a joy talking to you and just getting to pick your brain about all this stuff. And, um, yeah, hopefully, hopefully we can do this again t- sometime soon. I hope to see you at one of these events coming up soon. And, um, I'm, I'm yeah. going to San Diego, dude. I'll be dude, Sunday. I'm here right now. So I'll, I'll see yeah, you in just a couple yeah. days. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I'll see you at TNT. This is going to be fun. Well, come come by our come by our booth, say hi, and, and uh, oh, for yeah. sure, dude. You got a booth, man. Got a That's booth. Awesome. I'm We're gonna have Dover some Pool. snacks. We're gonna have some yeah. some snacks and beverages there. So yeah. we gotta we gotta smuggle we gotta smuggle them in, but you know, yeah, yeah. I'll put a <laughs> dude. guaranteed. Awesome, awesome, Chris. Well, thank you so much for for having a chat and sharing this all with us. So much knowledge, honestly. So much, just so much actionable stuff, and and uh, yeah, really very humbled to to talk to you about all this stuff and looking forward to the next chat. Yeah, man. Amazing. This was fun. Thank you for the invite. I I'm honored that, you know, man, like I said, I'm just a, just a guy that, you know, that's editing, you know, and just <laughs> and paying off, you know what I mean? <laughs> that's so, hilarious. So I'm just happy that, uh, you know, that I, I, I was, uh, I've, I've, I've somewhat gotten to a level where I'm being invited to, 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 to to be interviewed, which is pretty cool. I still can't believe it. Like, dude, I'm I'm on the I'm on the Vintel, you know, podcast. It's pretty amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, man, thanks dude, so dude, much. Your software, bro, and I just gotta say something. Your software yeah. is awesome, by the way. Like, you know, like and you, dude, like it's it's awesome. Like sometimes I'm on, dude, I'm I'm on there. You know, I'm on there just you know just seeing what's going on. <laughs> you know That's, what I mean? I love the love love. We always love to hear that. That's uh, yeah. What the competitor are doing and just what's kind of what looks like it's cracking and you know i've seen enough data to kind of kind of have a sense on oh this is working you know what i mean exactly um and you know it's just it's research it's, it's good good old research and, and good old research answers a lot of questions that we have and which helps us make less mistakes so it's great to have i mean honestly without it dude it's, it's like it's, it's like one of my arsenals it really is that's um, awesome yeah. Yeah, yeah so yeah yeah man keep doing Thanks. your thing Thanks, Chris. Really appreciate it, man. And and uh, have a great rest of your weekend and see you in San Diego sometime soon. Yes, sir. Appreciate you, sir. I'll see you. Appreciate uh, you. Weekend. All right. Thanks, All right, Chris. Thanks. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye. All right. Well, thank you for joining us for this episode of VidTal Podcast. Again, my name is Ian Naj, co-founder of VidTal, and really appreciate you having a listen. And it means a lot. So if you have any feedback, go ahead and email us at info at vidtal.com. Love to hear your ideas for future shows, future guests. If you want to be a guest, let us know. Love to chat. Also, just as a reminder, this show has been sponsored by Vidtal, which is our free YouTube ad library, vidtal.com. Again, you can go to Vidtal and look up over a million ads at this point inside of Vidtal. And uh, they're all unlisted YouTube ads. You can see what your competitors are running, track the results on a day-by-day basis, find new ads inside of our YouTube ad library, VidTal. 
And we also have a premium edition of Vitality. So the library is free to access, but for full unlimited access to the library, we have a premium, a premium edition of Vital. And we also have training from our Incepli.com agency, which is our sister company to Vital, where we've managed over $150 million on YouTube. We provide training on media buying, creatives, tracking, uh, copywriting, everything in between. It's all there inside of Vital Premium. And right now we're running a very special deal on Vital Premium. And you can go claim that right now at vidtow.com. When you sign up for free, you'll see the offer to join premium and go there and check that out. And last thing, we also do uh, free brainstorm calls with our agency, Incepli. Go to incepli.com slash call. And we love brainstorming with you on your video advertising um, and just marketing in general. Love to chat. So incepli.com slash call, C-A-L-L would love to speak with you. So thanks again for joining us and looking forward to the next show. In the meantime, have a great week.